So Chris, do you want to start this week or what? Chris Sorby, one of my favorite people. <laughs> Her and I get to host this beautiful, beautiful, um, what do you want to call it? It's a library, it's iconic. Yeah. It's just beautiful, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to let you go ahead um, and say what this is all about and give the little code of the classroom and then we'll start in with talking with Mr. MC himself. Boom. Boom. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're going to ask everyone to please mute their microphones and turn off their videos so that uh, on the screen you will only see the three of us um, and we're absolutely blessed to have a very very special person with us this evening who's Mr Michael Cole and Michael I would like you to tell the audience what exactly do you um, how would you describe yourself well, first and foremost, I'm, I'm amongst my homies uh, today. I'm a hairdresser. So that's the cloth that I cut from. And the story is similar to everyone's story. Uh, and and I, I spent a little bit of time doing that and, and working as hard as I could to get my craft down and uh, was fortunate enough to uh, meet uh, good people to teach me the ways, introduced me to uh, the people side of the art with serving clients. And I was touched by that. It, it not only touched me as a hairdresser, but as a, as a person, uh, the role back then I was a father and, a, and a, a husband. And so I got really interested in that and began to uh, pay it forward. So I, you know, while I was educating hairdressers on the hair part, I was talking about how to serve. And over months, I, I found myself just talking more about serving. And uh, it looked like people were as or more interested in the serving part. I was watching my peers like you, Chris, continue to level up the art part. And I thought, well, you know, you, you can't be a jack of all trades and a master of none you know so we i just decided i'm gonna just pivot and make my calling about teaching people how to earn better and and uh live better by serving better and that pivot was many 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 years ago and and so that's been my uh my calling my uh, vocational ministry is just helping hairdressers to uh earn and live and learn better by teaching them how to serve people. Beautiful. I'm going to interject because this has been on my mind forever. And I don't know if I ever asked you this. I don't think you'll be embarrassed, but you might say, Joseph, that's just not true. Okay. Is it true that back in the seventies, when you were a baby hairdresser, or probably not sort of, you were a businessman at the point because you did shit and you weren't afraid to do it. But were you not one of the first in the United States to start the concept of a chain salon? Yes or no? Uh, I was uh, on the very beginning, I, I was with people when chain salons were a glimmer in their eye. Yep. I was on their payroll, I was part of a team of uh, people. And yep. from that, it continued. So I don't know that I would say it was my glimmer in my eye, but I was with- uh, uh, But you people. were somewhat instrumental, right? Yes, I was there in the beginnings. And, and a lot of these people now that have very, very, very large companies, we, I, I joke with them and say, I, I knew you before you were rich and terribly happy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh but there's a lot of okay. story a lot of fair enough. in that yes, yes fair yes. enough i feel better chris <laughs> your turn that's so cool michael um i'm gonna ask you which living person do you most admire and why <clears throat> well the 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 heroes in my life today 
um, uh, are, are, are different than the heroes of my life a few years ago, because as I grow, I, you know, it's almost like, okay, what's the next, what's the next leap? And so it, it's moving less from the motivational excitement. Um, it's still important, but uh, to more uh, the, the deeper personal, the, the, the spiritual. Uh, so uh, when I think of uh, uh, spiritual teachers today, you know, uh, that the, the Eckhart Tolle, the power of now, uh, just a just a very uh, sacred, holy teacher. It just you know the eyes to see. Um, there are some. Uh, uh, let's see. I was just on a uh, one of her classes uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday. Cynthia or Cynthia Bourgeau is uh, a teacher that uh, teaches uh, meditation and and centering and how to uh, get centered when I'm you know off-centered uh, so you, let me interrupt you how would you um how would you spell Burjo? uh good question <laughs> good question um, it's the hairdressers come on <laughs> so, it's um, okay it's okay it's okay michael i'll just do the hook on phonics kind of thing Yes, oh, it's B O U R G E A U L T. Cynthia Cynthia Borgio, and she wrote uh, the uh, okay. I believe it's called the uh, Art of Centering, the Art of Centering Prayer or Centering Something. But it's a beautiful book, and you can get her you you can watch her YouTube's for free. That's oh. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh well, again. that's exciting. I've got a, I've got. Just go watch something. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Well, you know what? I um I uh, love you, Michael. You've changed many, many, many hairdressers' lives. Many of them I have brought to you in bus loads. Yeah. And the the look on their face, the enthusiasm, the wanting to go back to work, the wanting to treat their client right, the wanting to book their client right the wanting to make that money, the wanting to, you know, no shame, no blame. Do you know what? What the heck? I mean, that is truly a lot of a gift that you have given many, constantly, constantly. And I just have to commend you. I, I believe part of what Chris and I are doing with Iconics is everything that I just said about you that, because that, how many books have you written? Many, you know, a, a, you know, a handful. <laughs> and, do you, and a lot of in your books are the writings that you write yeah. and speak about. Yeah, it, it, first and foremost, it, it, it's how I live my life. So, you know, from being uh, with, with Chris for a number of years, it's, you know, living what you teach. You know, you teach what you live. You, you know, you walk the talk. You try to show what you can tend to know. Um, and... Uh, they, it's been, uh, you know, and, and one thing better than the truth, and that's the whole truth. And you as educators, I know, can identify that we're, educators are as good as the people that they dance with, as the people that they educate. So it has been uh, a marriage made in heaven by, from the people that I teach and what I get from them. So it's, uh, it's been a glorious, glorious, glorious ride. So Love on that. that note, Michael, um, to whom would you say sorry and why? To who would I say sorry and why? Um, boy, that boy, your questions are so provocative. <laughs> uh, they, they really are. Uh, you, you know, they, as I stand in the back of a, of, a, of a boat of about 50 years, you know, the, the, the wake is long and it's deep and it's wide. And there are people, I, gee, I wish I had that one to do a little bit more different than I did it. One of the, one of the few people that come to mind you know, are my teachers. And my first teacher was Horst, uh, uh, Horst Rickelbacher, rest his soul, who passed. And I was very, very young when I met him, like, you know, 19, 20. Uh, and I spent three or four years with him 
Uh, and as I look back, I wish I would have uh, had more time uh, with him. Uh, my second teacher was Joe Francis, who passed in the early 90s. Uh, and again, it's really, it, it, any regrets is I wish I would have had more time to be in, in their presence. Because as I look back at uh, the time I had with both, uh, it, it, the, the footprints were big and huge. And uh, I love both of them. I had an opportunity to say goodbye to both when it was their turn to pass. So that, that would be two of a number. And you know, as I go through the list, it's all about, I wish I had more time. <laughs> so that's a really important thing for students and stylists to take on board. And right now during this global lockdown that we're all experiencing, um, is a great opportunity to be able to reach out to those people that you actually want to spend time with, even if it's remotely. It's time to reflect on your teachings and how we can now um, support our clients differently and show them the love because God knows we've all missed them for weeks and they're missing us, which is a good thing too. Yes, yeah. you know, uh, to your point, it's, it's, it's huge where I, I have friends now that are now they're starting to message me, text, call, whatever about, you know, the, the, they're depending on the part of the country, salons are just beginning to, you know, their second, third, fourth day. And um, I've had the opportunity to just listen and learn the experience that uh, salon owners and hairdressers are, have had. And to my delight and surprise, it has been nothing short of glorious that they're so happy to see each other and they have to be mindful of all of the, you know, the, the, the protocols. But um, biggest day we've ever had uh, to the, our guests are, have been most uh, gracious in their gratuities. And, you know, the, the idea that because we can only serve so many, we can't, you know, we can't double book, we can't do this. And what I'm hearing is it doesn't matter that it, it we're, we're busy and we're just, we love seeing each other. We've missed each other now. You know, how long will that go? You know, stay tuned, more will be revealed. But it's really wonderful to see that initial, we're, 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 we're coming back to life. Yeah, absolutely. I can't, you know what, I, I can't, uh really say enough. I think that with May being Mental Health Month, and we don't hear a lot about what's going on in the mental health world. Um, and I have someone close to me that, you know, tried to take their life. And I think that that's kind of, um, you know, something that people need is us. And like you say, um, you know, it's crazy how we, the profession that we are, has been ripped out of the world temporarily. And it's truly realizing by a lot of people how calming that we are, how they need to come to us, how they need to be touched, how they need to be taken care of, how they leave. And you know, it's really, it, it is something that I think our industry right now, for some reason, as much as it's been taken away, is just slingshotting into... Okay. I mean, people crawling to the front of the salon on all fours and their knees are bleeding and they're like, when are you opening? It's like, yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. help you right now. Yes, 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 um, yes. And I, you know, I'm, I'm doing like house calls where to your point, you know, when you've been in lockdown for the, as long as people have, you, you can lose hope. Yeah. And, you know, and you get kind of like in this emotional swamp. Yeah. And, you know, I I probably do, you know, 20, 20 house calls a week where, you know, 20, 30 minutes on a Zoom call with a team of 20 people to say, look, um, if you've lost hope or faith, I'm going to borrow you mine until you get yours back because it's going to come back. And when it does, you know, uh, yeah. duck. And, and to my delight, it, 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 um, like you said, people are being sl slingshot, catapulted into, um, 
just joy, joy and happiness. So yeah, they've know. been scarred. I want to say they've been scarred and, and they're going to, you know, when you say who knows how long that this is going to go on, you know, I really just see from what I, the reaction I'm getting from my stylist clients and what joy gets from her clients and what, I mean, the things that clients are doing right now are not asked for, but very surprising, uh, the gifting. And oh. I never knew what Venmo was, but let me just say, it's just this gifting thing. It just makes me feel so good right now. And you know, Michael, you know, not to interrupt Chris, but you know, then the students who you're very aware of are locked into boxes where they're very, they're not even getting to hang out with their peeps. They're not even be, you know, they can't even like bump shoulders and like say great haircut, you know, and, and they've got to come back into a whole new, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, yeah, I was just on a Zoom call today with a Salon professional, Salon professional Academy in uh, Maplewood, Minnesota, with I think there was probably thirty people on yeah. students on the Zoom call. But yeah. to your point, they were just, um, you know, they needed they needed emotional self care. Yeah. I I think you know I yes. think there's going to be a COVID PTSD, right? Oh. And, you know, so this this is going to and I I just see that this is where I'll spend the rest of my years. Um, you know, showing up and helping people to get kind of centered, you know, to, to you know, the, the, the spiritually aware, mentally quiet, emotionally calm, physically grounded so that they, they, they can have a, a less experience of fear and more of an experience of grace to get us through it, help us recover and restore from it. So I'm, um, I'm looking forward to this. Me too. Yeah. Would you say that, um, you know, especially for new stylists or for students, that it's going to take a long time for their confidence to come back? Yeah, I think that will, be, and these are hunches now, right? I, sure. But I think to the degree that students have the opportunity to have access to people like you, where, you know, they're, they're being mentored, uh, they're being, their, their soul is being mentored, the heart, the mind, uh, that, that they'll get restored. Anything that was lost in terms of hope, faith, inspiration, self-esteem, self-confidence, it'll come back quicker and then it'll get leveled up. The, the, you know, it's one thing to get restored, it's another to be transformed. Mm -hmm. So you can look back and go, you know, as painful as that was in, in looking back, it was a blessing in disguise because it made me something into something more that I may not have gotten to had we not gone through. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing when that can be part of someone's retrospect. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Joseph, what do you have for Michael? Well, I want to, I'm still, I want to take him back to what was your forte when you first started in this industry? Was it, you know, did you feel good at cutting design? Um, did you, I mean, cause you said, did you talk to Horst in the beginning of your relationship with the industry? Yeah, he was my first employer, became my teacher uh, and was really responsible for any technical creative skills in my wheelhouse. He was 100 and his, his peers, like he, he would take me to New York for the inner coiffure and I would meet and back in those days, the, you know, the heroes, the, the, the Don Shaw's uh, of the world, the Vidal Sassoon's and the, the Jameson Shaw's and the John Delario's. And See, the, it, this it, is it, what I'm talking about. Right, it, it, it goes, and I would kind of like sit at their feet and walk. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I was horse personal assistant, I think my, for my first six months, where, you know, they, it, I, and people, you would make fun that we were kind of the human hair clip. That, you know, when he would section hair, he would, and he would look, and that was my cue to hold hair while he was, and that, but that was how I learned. Uh, so, you know, the idea was to, you know, I would mimic, I would watch, I would 
uh, model. And, and a lot of that happened, that learning happened through osmosis. And it was, a, it was very disciplined. I, we would stay after hours and, and then do work on models. And he would be there. We would, we would be part of soirees uh, monthly. And I, you know, it's interesting I, when you say, when's the last time I've had this conversation with somebody? And I'd say, I, I don't remember. It's been so long. See, I mean, we're talking 50 years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, but I, I remember that and um, that that was my on-ramp to um, what got me here. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be, those were, those were memorable days. And I love now David Wagner, who is kind of, was his prodigy, uh, bought the salons. He now has a, uh, uh, you know, some salons all over the country, and I even think a couple in other countries, Jute, uh, David and I were uh, 19, 20, working with one another. We were sweeping floors, and, 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 and his assistant when uh, in 74, 75. So th those are, you know, those were the days. Yeah. Yeah. And did he ever cut your hair? When I had it, a uh, horse all the time. But when I had hair, he would cut. We would cut each other's hair, and uh, it was uh, it was glorious. But it was, my discipline back in the in, in the early to mid seventies, it was you know that was the era of Vidal Sassoon. Sure, so everything was precision haircutting. Yeah, uh, finishing. Uh, there was l little to no color. Some henna back then. Uh, lots of texture. Um, and that was, uh, that was kind of my, God. my wheelhouse was, uh, primarily, uh, haircut, finish, design. I love that. Mm. And Horst yeah. was an incredible guy. I mean, what an empire he built. Oh, you guys, I don't, this isn't about me, but I was cutting hair one time in Minneapolis and I had maybe a couple hundred people and I was doing some, you know, compass cutting stuff back then with Terry Donnelly and, uh, I was nervous because this raggedy looking person with bib overhauls was in the back room. And I truly thought he was like a outside street person that had come in just for protection from the weather or needed water. And I remember clearly not feeling comfortable. I mean, very dready and it was odd, but I, I remember turning to someone and saying, I really think we may have a stalker or someone that needs to be taken out. And they're like, that's horse. Yeah. Well, he was, he was a bad, 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 <laughs> bad Joe, bad Joe. Yeah, but he was a, a revolutionary. And, oh my uh, God. I, I was honored to uh, be sitting next to him just after he sold his company when he whispered how much he got for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a, a, quite a, mit, <laughs> quite a lot. A, a very good move uh, for him. So yeah, I, I Rest his soul. Was it to Revlon? No, he. No. I don't know. No, oh, uh, Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, That's history. Yeah. That's history. That's right. No, right. Yeah. And I, I think it was, you know, for a few times his total sales, with, and, and that number lives at somewhere around 300, 350 million dollars. And now this was probably going on 15 years ago. So, um, he did well. He did very well. Yeah. Isn't that crazy how some parents want their kids to go to four-year college before they get into doing a hobby? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Ugh. And as you know, you know, there are more and more of uh, our, 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 uh, our homies, our besties, our hairdresser friends are busting into six-figure incomes. Yeah. Chair. And, and that's, I don't know that I would call it a norm, but it certainly is no longer unprecedented. There's right. a rhythm, there's a, you know, and uh, right. that's great to see because I think that's changing the conversation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and but we don't, we don't, about, go, go oh, ahead. Just, sorry, I was going to say, Michael, you talk a lot about money. And I think when I first <laughs> move to but in a in a good way and let me explain why i remember sitting in one of your classes one time and i've just come from britain you know this was 20 years ago and um we don't talk about money like they do in america so it was very uncomfortable for me 
to have those sort of conversations. But you gave me the tools that I suddenly thought, oh, is it just okay to talk about money? Mm -hmm. You know, what we earn as hairdressers or what our potential is or how yeah. much we should be charging for the services that we deliver. Mm -hmm. And you, you made me feel comfortable in my skin to, to be able to put a price on, okay, I went to school for X number of years to learn this. I've had so much experience, blah, blah, blah. This is what the price is going to be. But mm -hmm. before that, I would never have had the, uh, the confidence to, to speak that way. So yes. thank you for that. Yes, yeah, and you're welcome, Chris. And to your point, uh, I think I, you know, I, I, I always lead with, you know, once upon a time, you know, when a lot of us grew up impoverished mm -hmm. in, in, in scarcity. And because we were fortunate to meet good teachers, they not only so much uh, taught us how to kind of earn better, but a, a, a philosophy, uh, a spirituality, uh, a thought process about money where we were not to engage in the conversation and to pursue uh, a life of abundance was not an act of greed. Mm -hmm. that, that we, we could, I, I was taught, I was so fortunate that, you know, um, Money is something that if you learn it well, it, it'll be for the good of all in the harm of none. And, and Horst used to say money is energy and, and, and energy that we, you, uh, you, we all use to bring uh, good things into our lives and the lives of people we care about. And to the degree that we have money, we can use that energy uh, quickly. We can use that energy and to me, that's a, uh, a, 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 a wholesome way to think about and embrace, uh, you know, this part of our life called financial life, money, the personal side of money, the professional side of money. So, and to your point, it, it, it's, um, it was uh, a no-fly zone for a long time. Uh, uh, you know, you don't, don't talk about that. You know, it's not secret, but it's sacred and then it's people's, none of people's business. And so, we were able to enter that arena in a way uh, eventually to get people to interested in it and saying, wow, I never really thought about my money life that way, but that's a great way of thinking about it. I, I can, I can uh, enjoy abundance without being greedy and, and without it destroying my life. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's why when we're at school, our teachers are so crucial to us in, in every single respect. It's not just about teaching us how to do hair. They've got to teach us how to live and how to manage the money if we're fortunate enough to be able to make good money. Yes, I, I think I remember, I think it was Horst that said to me, money magnifies us. So whatever we have inside, both you know the, the virtue and the vice, Money's mm -hmm. going to magnify that. So, you know, the idea that we need to personally grow, kind of get out of us what's in us that's in the way and to foster the good in us so that as we get more money, virtue gets magnified. And, and there's less, we'll call it the less, uh, less vice there is to be magnified. So we, 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 money doesn't get us into trouble. So how would you suggest then, Michael, that if, if I'm a student in cosmetology school right now, okay, I'm sitting at home right now because of the COVID lockdown, but once I get back to school, how can I start helping myself to save and use the money that I have the ability to make, if not tomorrow when I leave school? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the the... the, the quickest and easiest way to do it. And again, when you ask me questions, you're going to get my answer, not necessarily the 11th commandment, but I love uh, YouTube. Like you can get on YouTube and, and find, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether it's a podcast or webcast, 10 minute, 15 minute talks that can feed a person's mind about this conversation 
and it doesn't cost them money they, to, to learn how to earn money. Yeah. So whether it's watching your YouTubes, my YouTubes, other people's YouTubes, there's just, and we didn't have that as an option a handful of years ago. Um, you, you had to pay for content and now content wants to be free. So you can go to places on the internet and, and uh, experience content without um, spending money. You know, you need to be yeah. resourceful. You need to know where yeah. to go. But if you you know, hang out with you guys, you you you'll you'll go go here, go there. Yeah. Anytime yeah. somebody comes to me, I'll go go to YouTube and watch this stuff. And mm -hmm. if you like that, let me know, and I'll tell you how to go over there and watch some yeah. other. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you you know, I'm gonna talk about money um, because you have always been a mentor and a coach to me and uh for years and i know that you and i have matching necklaces it's kind of queer but i got you a, yeah. i got you a really cool yeah. yeah i got you don't have it on well it it, it i i i changed i've taken the the uh uh little medallion that you've given and it's on my it's on a keychain now okay okay same, i'm like don't same, even no it's the same it's the same uh <laughs> necklace that i had when you gifted me with that and that has to be yeah. going on what do you think a long time, Chris. Chris, it was nail, nail. Uh, it was like um, nails that they used for railroad, and it was hammered and then soldered together. And it was three crosses. Golgotha. Yeah. Golgotha. It's yep. about. And it, and it, and I have worked with Michael's brother as well because I did classes in his studio. So I gifted one morning at breakfast him and his brother because I thought the three of us. Cause I was looking up to them like, what? So I'm like to have them all have this was a cool thing. But that, that I strayed a little bit. Sorry, Chris. Um, Michael, so you approached me and you said, you know what, you're making changing times in Salon CTI doing, you're doing so well, Joseph. You know, I see you at Redkin, you got all your training um, and you're training all of these stylists for the salon. Hmm. Why don't you look into training instead of one, I don't know if you remember this, every three to four months, why not do a hundred? And I looked at you and thought, how the hell would I do a hundred? And you're like, open an academy because mm -hmm. you, my friend, are all about vocation and it's time now for you to give it back. I'll never forget that. Yes. Never forget that. And another good friend of yours is Randy Conkle, who I love Randy. Chris, do you know Randy Conkle, Michael? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know what? You two have changed my life. I love you very much. My life hasn't been the same since you and your wives and that, and everything has come into it. Yeah. And um, it, it has created a different type of abundance. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you were, yeah. you were, people don't know this story about Joe, but he was the first summit class. He was the very first um, uh, to come to, and it was in my living room. It was. It was in this big, huge governor's mansion. <laughs> on, I mean, it was on a house on Summit Avenue, and that's yeah. where the name came. But you were yep. the first to come through with about, what do you think? It was maybe eight or nine other people, yep. and we were, we were learning this in my living room. That was history. That was the beginning of the Who beginning. knew? Who knew? Who knew? Who that knew? Now is, that 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 uh, we, well, m I have a Facebook Summit Salon community page that's now just just under sixty five thousand. Nice. Oh, so that that is the Summit community. So you were the first inside the first eight people, which is now a community that's in or around sixty thousand, give or take. So who knew? Well, well deserved. Yeah, well, well you know, when intentions are pure and a uh, vision is right and um, your heart's in the right place and you're being intuitively guided, um, you, you get to stand witness to stuff like that. I can now say to you, I knew you before you were rich and terribly happy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, oh. Joseph. <laughs> Touché. Yep. Michael, what has been your biggest disappointment in your life thus far? Oh wow, where do where does one start? In in my professional life, um, 
I, I was, um, I, and, and, you know, I can bring it. I was asked to do a keynote uh, talk. This was had to be 1999. Then there was this association called the, the Salon Association. It has since been disbanded, but it was, I was asked to be a keynote and I, it was just after uh, a major surgery that I had. I was very, uh, I, I, I was very mentally, emotionally, physically fragile. Um, I was on uh, a lot of uh, steroids from the operation. I had no business doing that. Uh, I, I, in retrospect, it's one of those things I wish I would have said no. Uh, I, and I, 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 I was called up to speak and the person before me was a very, very famous uh, speaker for Disney. And he just, he, 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 uh, he, he had the uh, audience in his palm of his hand. He uh -huh. ran over probably a half an hour. And so, and, and I was shaken by that. And I, and I got up to speak and the group had been sitting for like two hours and they wouldn't give him a break. And I went up there to make a long story less long. I froze. I just froze. I got through it. Um, but I, I remember afterwards, I, I just went up to my room and I just fell asleep. I was just, and so today I look back and said, I, I wish I would have, wish I had that one to do over again. Um, but if you said, what else? I could probably count on two or three fingers professional things, and that's just one of them. Uh, the, the personal regrets really are a little bit deeper, you know, in my 30s. I, I was a father very young. I was in my mid-20s when my two children <clears throat> were born, 25 and 26. <clears throat> and as the business took off, I took off with the business. So I was just, uh, uh, you know, if my children were here they and my wife, they would say he was an extraordinary provider, but he was, he was gone. Um, he was gone providing. And we used to kind of kid about it. Seminars that clothe us, it's seminars that feed us. So they always gave me that liberty to go out and, and, and earn. But there was too many times, <clears throat> there were too many events in their life that I missed. And there were too many times where I was, when I was at an event, I wasn't present. I was, you know, I was, there was something, a deal was on my mind. And so, Today, you know, as a 67-year-old father, grandfather, I, you know, I one day at a time, I, I, I make my demonstrations. I miss the pitch with you two, but I've got four grandchildren. And we, so it's like, this is, the, this is the best way that I can make this up. And they've forgiven me long ago. And, 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 the, uh, and the, li the, the lifestyle we have allows us to, to you know, to live a, a, a form a standard of living that we would not have had had I not chased. But uh, having said all of that, I, I wish I had that part to do over. That's fair yeah. enough. It's, it's quite something. I mean, I, since I got married um, in 2018, I've inherited the most delicious uh, stepson who's eight years old. And mm. that's the reason that uh, my husband and I live in the UK now uh not so much in in america and um and both of us are very very conscious of being with him and being present when we're mm -hmm. with him and my husband is the most incredible father to his son and i think probably because he a little like your kids experienced an absent father yes so yeah. That's why, and I completely support him in it, and I am blessed. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for your honesty, because that's, uh, it's, it's tough to admit those types of um, statements. Oh, yeah. My goal. Be entrepreneurs, you know, there's going to be, you know, older entrepreneurs. It was, if I had that to do over again, I wish I would have showed up differently and yep. been more present. So, but, um, you know, it is what it is, and we make the most of it and, and, and uh, use today to uh, amend, and uh, um, it's all good. So your grandkids are having a ball. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, yes, yes, they are. Uh, we, you know, I mean, if you, you know, if there were therapists hanging around, they go, no, that's codependency. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, shut up, get out of here. I want to spoil my grandchildren. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, Michael, Iconics, basically, I want you to look at as a time capsule because when we are gone, and these documentaries are playing and students are sitting in foundations and they're hearing about the Redken history and they're hearing about Ann Mincy's history and they're hearing about Chris and they're hearing about Sambia. And now here you are and you need to leave something in the time capsule. You need to let them know what it was in your life, in your legacy that like, what do you want to leave behind that they will say that's how they remember you by. Mm. Boy, yep. again, very, very provocative question. That uh, I, I was, uh, uh, you know, one person in their life that uh, saw something in them that uh, other people didn't see. You know, I call it potential is the God in me that's yet to be, yet to be seen and discovered. That, you know, my eyes, I, I was able to see something in them that others maybe didn't, as for sure they didn't, and that I was able to say, borrow my eyes and, and, and seeing in you what I see in you until you get your eyes and allow me to lead you in a way so that sooner rather than later, you, you get those eyes. And then once you do, uh, if you're grateful, uh, demonstrate your gratitude by uh, doing the same for someone else. You know, th that, 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 that message of pay it forward, pass it on. Uh, that would be to students, to, uh, you know, my epitaph would be, I just love that passage somewhere in the, in the ancient writings, uh, well done, oh good and trusted servant. You know, you, you left the world uh, better than you found it, and you know you were you were given a few coins when you came in, and you left something more than you were given. <laughs> I love that. Michael, hey, you're I... gonna make me cry, and if my fake eyelashes fall off with the tears, <laughs> I'm gonna blame you. <laughs> Go ahead. Like, one more it's thing. Enough. One more thing. I am drawn to what is on your t-shirt and I, it's bothering me is that oh, oh yeah it? yeah it's uh it's the uh it's my it it's uh, uh uh the the one foundational idea that uh, I was introduced to uh in 1999 it's called the I am I am and you and if you you know like from a little off the top a little more off the top yeah. over the top I talk about the principle the presence the power of I am, that there is something in us that it's not secret, it's sacred, it, it, it's greater than us, it waits, it's always been there, and it waits on us to uh, wake up to it so that it can begin the business of working for us and with us by coming through us to, to make our lives and the lives of people around us better than would be. And so that's my, that's my, uh, that's what I built my faith on. Um, and will spend uh, the rest of my life uh, until it's my turn to pass to help uh, wake that up in others. And, and in that process, continue to develop that wakefulness uh in myself so people ask all the time you're you're getting old what's next for you and you know i have a facebook page now called michael cole next and <laughs> what, what's next for me is to continue to uh to rise up to the next level of wakefulness about that that which is in me that's sacred and greater than me uh i want to get more of that out of me and in a way to wake up that same consciousness and people around me. That's my calling now. I love that. And Chris, I wanna ask Michael one more thing. Michael, have you ever had the opportunity of being um, graced with the presence of 
Beth Minardi. Yes, yes, we're 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 besties, and we follow each other on uh, social. And we, her and I, stood on platforms together way long ago in the '90s. So uh, I have watched her grow over the years. She's yes, gonna, she is. Not to interrupt you, but she is on next Monday. Oh. And I would like you right now to take 30 seconds to in, to just put it out there so that we can bring in the 100 people to listen to these icons as they continue. And what would you say to the student and the stylist to, you know, you know what I'm getting at. I, I, I would consider, first of all, Beth Minardi is a, uh, a great soul. She is a, 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 a courageous, strong, woman, creative to the nth degree. And I would, I would refer to her as a spiritual warrior. That, you know, we, we, we all go through life and uh, it's, you know, we all have our turn with going into the barrel of yeah. life. And, 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 I've, and I've stood witness to the times where Beth has went into the barrel and she, first of all, always survives and comes out the other side stronger and 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 uh more virtuous than she than she was you know adversity makes us bitter or better it's always made uh beth better and um i just i love her and i i i hope that uh the the, the universe says beth you're not done yet i i think she's got another wave of something in her i do too yeah. She'll never be done. What are you talking about? Right. <laughs> She's amazing. Yeah. Um, so sadly, Michael, we're out of time. Um, but I just wanted to throw it over to Cassie Boyd, who I know is, uh, is with us in spirit. Um, Cassie, do we have any questions for Michael before we have to say goodbye to him? You can turn you know, your body on. We... Um, we don't have any in the house right now um, in our chat box. Because but, he does them amazing. Because he answered. He's at all. He answered them all. all. You answered all the beautiful questions, but I just wanted to say, Michael, and I see Randy Kunkel on here, and I do have to give a shout out because um, you two uh, made such an, I, I say, imprint instead of impact because you make such an imprint on lives daily just with your authentic presence every time we see your face mm. so thank you thank you for giving us I that and, and I'm, I'm gonna i'm just gonna do a shout out to my partner and my bestie randy kunkel yes once upon a time joseph you know it was you and me and randy and handful of other people it was a glimmer it was a glimmer in randy's eye before it was a glimmer in my eye and our eye and he he brought the idea to me about that and it wasn't called summit then it was just called michael you you know you do seminars i i help people go home and implement what you do let's put our minds together and see if we can come up with something that would help people do a better job at getting in their life what it is we teach. And so, you know, fast forward 20 years later, Summit, and now Randy and I are more ambassadors, if you will. And the company is now, it went from a, used to be an organism, and now it's an organization and it's doing extraordinarily well. And Randy and I stay out of the organization because we're entrepreneurs, uh, but he's a lovely soul. And uh, Chris, I don't know. Maybe we could get him to come on sometime. I don't know. Oh, I, I hope he has the opportunity. All right. So, Michael Cole, love you to death. I'll stay in touch with you. You stay in touch with me. All right, my friend. Stay love well. You, it's so good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And thank you all for coming.